Welcome to the Little Warrior Lessons series. This is lesson number six, I believe, and today we're talking all about relationships. So I'll just give everyone a second to jump on. So last week, somebody um, did ask me to do a little bit of a, a lesson around relationships and why we tend to push people away uh, when they get really close to us. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to jump straight into it. And I'm going to use my little whiteboard that I've got here. Okay, so I'm going to move out of the way. Let me just bring this down a little bit so you guys can see the whiteboard really well. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? Hey, Rachel. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Christina. Okay, so here we go. We're talking about relationships today, right? Okay, so here we have... We've got two lovers right, that have just met and they are just like, oh my God, who are you and where have you been, right? So they have just met and they are heart to heart, right? Heart to heart. They are like, whoa, this is, oh, hang on, that's better, okay. All right, so they're like, wow, who is this person, right? This is amazing i can't even believe that i've just met this person where the hell have they been my whole life now what happens is when you have a connection like this now this black line here is your inner the inner wall of your defense system okay when you have a connection like this the love right the love we're not going to pretend that we don't feel love straight away for people because love is a deep state of appreciation, right? So we feel that straight away. So what happens is, is that love, it penetrates through the defense mechanism. Instantly, with certain people, our wars drop. Our walls, not our wars. Well, <laughs> we could call them wars, couldn't we? Because essentially that's what those walls are. Our defense mechanism we open it up. We allow a little bit of, of, of room for that connection to be created. Okay? So what happens is we're like, wow, this feels amazing. I can't even believe what's happening right now. This is great. And we're all loved up, right? We're all loved up in this moment with this person. And we're having such an amazing time with them. And we're like, wow, this really could be my person. So we continue. What happens here is we're continuing to connect with this person. And because there is this deep sense of appreciation between each other and love, that's what love is, right? Acceptance and appreciation of each other. It helps us fall in love deeper with ourselves, right? So this starts to open more. And this, all the love, all of this, it fills up with love, right? And you're like, wow, this is amazing. This is so good. And we're like, you know what? I think, I think I might be safe enough to actually get rid of one layer of my defense mechanism. I mean, this person is showing up consistently and they're showing me I can trust them. And this is just, wow, I think, you know, I think I'm going to take that risk and I'm going to dissolve that layer of my defense mechanism. Okay, so now what happens is, is we've dissolved that layer of our defense mechanism, but now we're starting to feel a little bit exposed. Yeah, we're starting to feel a little bit exposed here because I haven't let anyone in this close in such a long time. So a bit of fear starts to creep in. And then what happens is this starts to grow up here. Is it really safe? I don't know. Are you just making this up? Are you going to be manipulated again? Are you going to be attacked again? Are you going to experience the pain you experienced last time? So now we have a bit of fear. Yeah? Fear creeping in. Old stories. Past trauma is all starting to show up in this connection. Right? Now the reason why it shows up and this, this can often take over and it can be really powerful and strong. It's because... This connection is so unique 
and so deep, the chances are you haven't ever really experienced a type of connection this deep before, okay? Now, here's what we, what we have to understand is that the defense mechanism is there to protect you. You created it, yeah? You created it a long time ago to protect you from allowing someone in to hurt you. Make sense to everyone so far? Let me check some of the comments. Hey, Anya. Hey, Chris. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got all these stories, these old programs, these fears, this pain from the past. Makes sense. We've also got the love. It's still flowing. There's still this deep sense of appreciation. It's still there. So <clears throat> the adult you is going, you know what? I think it's safe. I think it's still safe. I think even though I have all this fear and I know it's my own stuff, I think it's still safe and I still want to explore this. So I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to take a risk and I'm going to let this person in further because often what happens is this, this keeps growing, right? You can't just cut that off. Once it started, once, once you've felt that deep intimacy with someone, you can't just cut it off and sever it. But this also continues to grow too, especially if you have unresolved wounds from your past relationships. But the, the, the you know the adult use like, but I want I want love, I want the package, I want I want this deep connection, and, and I found it, and so I'd be a fool, I'd be a fool not to explore this with someone so amazing like this person. So like you know what, I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do it. I am gonna make myself vulnerable. And I'm going to remove another layer of my defense mechanism. I'm going to slowly drop it. You know, and you could be, you could be about three months in by this stage, right? It could be about three months in. This is three, four months in. This is usually when we get to this, this level, this part of the defense mechanism. With certain people, it takes longer. And it's wise to take longer to lower your defense mechanism because you want to build that trust right? But we have not been taught how to build a healthy, solid relationship with someone slowly. We've been taught to dive right, right in, jump right in and deal with the consequences later. But for those of us who have inner child trauma, that's not the best option for us. And this is how we end up hurting ourselves in these deep connections. So now we have the final layer of our defense mechanism and we're feeling really exposed here, okay? Now, this defense mechanism, this is the one you created between the ages of zero and six when you're creating your belief system. So this one is the strongest part. Now, in here, you have your triggers, your aggression, your suppressed anger, all of those parts of you that can be a bit harsh and a bit aggressive, right? Does everyone know what I'm talking about? You know that part of you that when you get triggered, when you get triggered and you don't have the emotional maturity or the emotional intelligence to go, oof, I'm really triggered right now. Let me just go within and look at what that is. When you haven't learned how to do that, what you do when you're here, when this part is exposed, you attack, right? So this person's triggered you, probably with one of their wounds, and you're like, I'm exposed right now. This person could really hurt me because I'm so exposed to them. They could literally take a knife and cut me. So what you do is you attack and you push that person away. And you're like, you know what? This is too intense. I'm done. I'm going to, and once this person feels attacks, attacked, walls up. Here comes the layers again of the defense mechanism, right? You put your defenses up, you push that person away, and you're like, you know what? This is crazy. I'm done. So this person's feeling really attacked now, probably having no idea what's happened, or they may have some idea. And you are like, you know what? This is too hard. I'm just going to put my walls back up. I'm going to take a, take a break. I'm going to push this person away. Potentially you ghost, potentially they ghost because it's too intense. And this is what these types of relationships do. So whether you realize it or not, we have evolved as people. So we're really beginning to understand what love is. And we're beginning to understand that through the love that we have for ourselves. 
right? So now we're beginning to understand how to love people. It's not just through acts of service, it's actually through this deep appreciation, right? So now what's happened is, is we have two people who still have this really strong heart-to-heart -heart connection, but it's been overridden by the head, and, and the stronger this gets, the weaker this gets, okay? Because now the wounded ego has taken over. This is the wounded ego. This is the wounded ego that's like, oh, that's a red flag. Oh, they said that. Why would they do that? This is where your suspicious archetype comes in. This is where you become judgmental of the person you once had a loving connection with. All of that stuff starts to come in here. Okay, so is everyone with me so far? Let me just check the comments. Okay, so... But what happens is as time goes on and as you have that distance now in this relationship, there's a little bit of distance, what happens is, is the wounded ego, right, the wounded ego starts to fade because there's no longer that fear of being attacked, of being hurt. So the wounded ego starts to get smaller and smaller and the thoughts in your head start to quieten down, which means you start to remember this beautiful heartfelt connection that was once really, really, really strong, okay? And that's when you start to miss someone and you start to go, oh, what have I done? How could I push them away? Nobody's ever loved me like that before, right? You start to feel all this regret or you start to feel like, you push them away. So that's why we push people away. We push them away because there's this deep fear of them hurting us. Now, the closer we let people into our hearts, the easier it is for them to hurt us again, right? Because we haven't learned how to trust people. We haven't learned how to build healthy relationships, okay? And so essentially when you come together with someone in today's day and age, right, because really what's happened is, is that we have evolved, like I said earlier, we've evolved as people and we are trying to have relationships the way we had relationships before, where it's all in, do everything together, <coughs> excuse me, blend our lives together, move in together, and we try to do that quickly. And what it does is it actually pulls us out of alignment of ourselves and it creates a lot of different dynamics, which I don't really have time to go into all of the dynamics of what happens, but I just want to give you a little overview here of what I believe makes for a really healthy relationship in today's society that I think if we all started having this type of mindset in relationships, that it would really help us have these really, really powerful relationships with others, right? So let me just have a sip of water. So there's essentially three bodies. There's essentially three bodies in a relationship, right? This is you. This is the other person. And this is... The, the, the combined body of the relationship, okay? So, whew, I'm really puffed. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm puffed from talking. Okay, so this is you, independent you, as you should be, doing the inner work, healing your inner child, finding ways to be aligned, meditating, living your best life, following your passions and your dreams. And this is the other person as well, doing the same thing. Okay, and this, this here is the most important relationship in the relationship. It is the relationship you have with yourself. Same with this person. Okay, so that when you show up here, you're showing up as your best self. You're not showing up as your wounded self. And when they show up here, they're also showing up as their best self. Okay, now let's say when you come together, yes. There is going to be stuff reflected between you that is going to trigger you. Now, at times, 
what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to go back over here and address why you're triggered, what it's about, and then come back and communicate it in a mature way. And they're going to have to do the same. But what we do is we're like, you've really triggered me. Well, yeah, you've really triggered me. And we react from those wounded parts of us, creating chaos in a relationship. And then we have two wounded people in their heads trying to resolve an issue which can't be resolved from that wounded place. And so they run, they, they, they separate, okay? Now, sometimes, guys, it is not possible to stay here in this bubble and do the work together. Sometimes you have to go out to then come in more empowered, okay? Now, sometimes you will be able to come down here in your healing bubble, right? This is your healing bubble where you can both be vulnerable and open and be like, babe, I am scared as hell to be in this relationship. And they're like, I'm scared as hell to be in this relationship too. But you know what? I love you so much that I'm willing to do the work because I want to be with you. Like, I, I, But sometimes I need to go into this bubble to do it. Sometimes it's too confronting for me to be vulnerable here with you like this. But I want to. But it's going to take time because I've got trust issues. Yeah? And they're like, you know what? I've got rejection issues. And sometimes I can't come in and expose myself to you because it's too confronting. But it's not about you. That's about me. Okay? So sometimes you're going to be able to come down into your healing bubble and do the work together. How beautiful would that be, right? But sometimes, and this is where you have to find love and acceptance for your partner, sometimes your partner's going to need time and distance from you. And this is where you as the empowered goes, it's not personal. That's not about me. That's about him or her. They need space from me to process what's going on. And I'm going to give them that space. Okay? So this is where unconditional love can be present between two people when they find unconditional love for themselves first right when they can understand that if their partner's triggered them and they've reacted and they've attacked them they know that it's actually not about them it's about their partner right so they're going to go away and do the inner work so it's really important that if you want a healthy relationship you understand that one it takes time to get to know someone, yeah? It takes time to get to know someone. And, and by time, I mean it could take 12 months to get to know someone to a point where you're like, yeah, you know what, I think I really want to explore this. So take your time getting to know people. Don't fall in love. Don't jump into love when you don't know someone, especially if you have inner child wounds because essentially what you're doing to your inner child is you're saying that's okay it doesn't matter i'll sort it out later i'm going to go in blindfolded and i'll deal with you later because what your inner child's going to do is your inner child is going to freak out right and that's when you're going to your inner child is going to help you get into your head and you have the risk of potentially damaging a really beautiful connection that hasn't even begun to evolve yet okay so it's really, really, really important that you understand that new age relationships can get to that place where you move in together and live together and all of that kind of jazz. But you can understand that it's going to take time. And even if you do live with someone, there's a good chance that your partner is going to need time away from you. And it's, it's actually really, really healthy. It's, it's okay if you don't speak to someone for days right? Because when there is this healthy, there's this like, I don't even know how to draw this. There's this like healthy trust. This is trust, right? And that trust has been established over time. What that means is that it means that, babe, I know I've got you. I know that when you're going to go out here, that I'm, I, 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 I'm holding space for you to come back when you're ready. And I trust that your, your um, commitment to this bubble, to us, is here because I've taken my time to get to know you. I've taken my time to become vulnerable in this relationship that there's been so much trust built 
that I'm not going to freak out and panic when you decide to go into your own private bubble to do some healing or to go have some fun with your mates or whatever it is. I'm going to be okay because I'm also doing the work on my trust issues. Yeah? And so this is where it becomes important that you don't need your partner to help you solve your issues. You don't need your partner to help you heal your inner child wounds because they've got their own stuff to do. This is where you as the empowered person, person you have your support network, you have your, uh, your therapy that you go to, you have the things that you do to work on your trust issues because really this person is your mirror and they are just showing you the things you need to heal in order to be able to step into an empowered and mature relationship with another human being, okay? But really it all comes down to you doing the inner work on yourself first and having that deep self-awareness. And yes, we can be single and doing the inner work and get to this level of inner peace, right? But it's not until we enter into a divine union with someone that deeper parts of our wounds are reflected and our fears and our abandonment wounds and our rejection issues. And that's where you have this really beautiful opportunity to grow as a person with somebody else next to you. Yeah, but it really comes down to number two, which is learning about how to love, love and accept the other person exactly as they are today right? Not needing them to change in order for you to feel safe in your bubble. If you need to feel safe in your bubble, that's on you. You need to come out over here and do the inner work. If they've got rejection issues and they fear intimacy, <coughs> they need to come out here and they need to do the work so that they can come back in as their best self, right? So, I think that was everything that I wanted to cover there. So let me just have a look and see um, if there are any questions here. Let me know if there's any questions. I just got to check the time as well. Yep. All right. So Vicky's saying, I realize now the person who traumatized me, I finally came to acknowledge and let him in by a living hug. I felt his love that I pushed away and we became close again. Yep. You know, and that's often what happens. A lot of the times our romantic partners, they come in and they give us this love we've never had before. Affection, love, attention, sweetness. And what happens is it triggers our defense mechanism. Because we're like, oh, is this like last time? Is this person going to abandon me? Are they out to get me? Are they, is there something that they want from me? Right? So Susan's just saying, my son and I just today mended a six-month separation. I'm so happy. Congratulations. That's beautiful. And yeah, these relationships are not just romantic relationships. They're your intimate relationships with people, right? Well done, Susan. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome, Rachel. Good. Okay, beautiful, guys. So look, if there aren't any questions um, and you really got a lot out of this. In November, I'm running a 16-week program where I dive deeper into actually navigating your way through your relationships and learning how to communicate in an empowered way and healing your childhood wounds and understanding yourself better. So if that's something that you're interested in, drop me a comment below or send me a private message and I will send you the details for the program. Actually, I'll probably just put the link in the comments as well. So anyone who's interested in it can jump in and have a look. It's one of my, uh, it's, it's a program I designed last year and I was only going to run it once. But the people who did the program had such a profound transformation that I decided to run it again. And this will be the third time that I'm running it. And we start in November because a lot of the times in November, that's when our inner child starts to get triggered right, and rear its head because it wants healing. And it gets triggered because it's leading up to Christmas. And Christmas is meant to be a really happy time. But for people who have childhood trauma, it's usually a depressing time. And it's the best time to do the inner work, right, when all of these triggers start to show up. So it's a really beautiful program. 
it's dirt cheap at the moment and I've done that because of everything that's happening around the world. I want to help as many people as I can. And in a group program, you actually get to experience the power of connection and support. Right? And you get to practice communicating and holding space and showing compassion with other people in private breakout rooms. And that is really important to practice that with people, especially if you want to bring that into your romantic relationships and your intimate relationships, right? So guys, I'm sending you all so much love. You're all so very welcome. Um, I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day or evening, wherever in the world you may be. And I look forward to seeing you next week for another Little Warrior lesson. See you, everyone.